Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to return the number of working days from our date table. So stay tuned. So recently I was working on site with a customer and this question came up and they didn't really have a good date table yet, right? They had a pretty generic date table that we created and they wanted to know how can we just count the number of days from our date uh, table just for working days. And they also wanted to be able to include some pretty basic holidays in that, right? So, you know, obviously just to count the number of days from the date table, pretty simple operation. I just want to do a count throws of the date table that returns all the days. That's assuming that you have a well-built date table that has one date for every day of the year. And so if you filter that down to 2009, you're going to get 365 days. Now, if you want to return the total days for, you know, work days or days of the week, then you might try to do calculate count rows from the date table where you know, the days in the week are day numbers of the week are two through six, right? So maybe an in clause or multiple or conditions, whatever way you want to do it. Pretty easy calculation though. But is there an easier way to do it? And so it came to my attention. One of the people there was actually, oh, there's this, I saw, read about this function the other day. It's network days. Can we use that? And I was like, ah, oh, this looks interesting. I'll take a look at it. And I just typed it out real quick. And it really did kind of give us exactly what we wanted. So I was like, you know what? I didn't know about this function, so probably a lot of people don't. Let's do a quick YouTube video on it. So that's what we're going to do. On my report, very basic, very simple report, I have the total number of days that are in my date table right here, 2,191. And if I look at that measure that I built, it's exactly what you would expect. This is the count rows from my date table. The way I would have generally built a working days or a days of the week, weekday calculation is I would have taken this measure and I'd create a new one. I'd say calculate total days where, you know, we'd have a filter on there where the days in the week are Tuesday through or Monday through Friday or one through six, whatever your day number is. And I'd build a another measure. It'd take a couple of seconds, no big deal. But another way to do this would be with network days, right? So on my date table here, I'm going to go ahead and build a new measure. So I'll just right click on the date table, build a new measure, and we'll take a look at this one. And then in a moment, I'm going to show you the documentation. So this will be called working days, All right, We're just going to call this one here working days. I'll even go ahead and just zoom in. There we go. And I'm going to build a couple of quick variables because we're going to need these, right? So I'm going to build a variable here. And the first variable I'm going to build is going to be the first date that we're going to pass into this measure. So first date equals and I'm just going to grab the minimum date from the current filter context. Then I'll build another measure, and this is going to be last date, and this is going to be the maximum date from the current filter context, right? So if somebody puts a filter on the year 2009, I would get January 1st of 2009, and then I would get the maximum date from that date range, which is December 31st of 2009, and that's what I'm going to pass into my function. And then I'll come down here to the bottom and I'm going to say return. And then I'm going to write my function. And we're going to use network days, right? So I'm going to write this completely and entirely different than I would have generally considered writing this in the past. And so I'm going to come in and I'm going to say network days. And when you type this out, it tells me right here in the, the tool tip, it needs a start date, it needs an end date. And then there's two optional parameters and we know they're optional because they have these little square brackets around them, right? That means it is optional. I think it's the same way in Excel as well if you write expressions there. And so we can also pass in, this is what's cool, you can pass in your own list of weekends. So even though I say weekend is Saturday and Sunday, you might say, well, for me, it's actually Friday and Saturday. So you can pass in your own list. And I'll show you that here in the documentation in just a moment. So I'm going to pass in my, my parameters. My first one is going to be first date. My second one is going to be my last date. And that's really all that's required, right? At this point, we're kind of done unless we want to change maybe the default weekend or if we want to add a list of what was the other thing there? It was holidays. So we'll come back to that in just a moment. But if I hit enter and then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and format this right here. That has my new measure right here called working days. I'm going to grab working days, drag it over here, drop it on this card visual that was already prepared for us. 
and there we go. So I get 1,565 days. Now, if I click on my year and I click 2009, this is counting the number of rows in my date table for the year 2009. If I go to 2008, you see it changes because it was a leap year. And this is changing as well. This tells me the number of working days. So the number is clearly different, right? It's smaller. So what's it doing? Is it excluding holidays that are known? Is it excluding weekends? What is it doing? Well, the default behavior, as I've learned, is it just excludes by default the weekends. It doesn't make any assumptions on holidays, okay? So it excludes Saturdays and Sundays automatically. That's what I've seen as I've explored this. Now, a way that we can validate that, of course, is I could say for 2009, 261, right? So I could go to my date table. I can filter down my date table to calendar year. I might still have it filtered. I do. I already have it filtered here. And what you'll see is that I've filtered it down right here to the year 2009, right? So I've already filtered this table down to the year 2009. And then I've also filtered the table down over here on the left to the day number of week two through six, which is, as you can see, Monday through Friday. And the reason I did that is because at the very bottom of this table, this is a great way to validate your code, just a very simple way. At the very bottom of this table, it's gonna tell me what I done. So my table originated with 2,191 rows, but after the filters that I've applied, there are 261 rows. So this table currently has 261 rows in it, right? For the year 2009, for Monday through Friday. So it matches exactly what my measure is returning. And this is when I only exclude, right? When I only exclude weekends. So there's no holidays being kind of counted here. Now, let's take a look at the documentation real quick because the documentation is important. And if I pull up network days in the Microsoft Learn documentation, this will kind of give us some pretty good information about what's going on. So first of all, at the top, it tells you it returns the number of whole work days between two dates. So we choose the dates, it looks at the date table, it returns all the dates that are work days, Monday through Friday by default. Um, weekend days and days specified as holidays are not considered work days, okay? So we can exclude those. Here's the basic syntax, we already saw that before. It tells you a start date and an end date, what those parameters represent. And then it gives you this weekend property. What does this mean? This is kind of cool. I like this a lot because it gives you very quick and easy flexibility without having to you know, go through and specify. So for example, if I only wanted to omit Sunday and say Sundays are weekend, but we consider Monday through Saturday working days, that optional parameter for weekends, I would just put the value of 11 and then it would only ignore Sunday. So it would count Saturdays as a working day. But you can go through here and you say, you know what? Saturday only is a weekend. So you put 17 instead. Um, what I normally do is I'll come in here and well, you could just do Saturday or Sunday. So you could do one um, or omitted. What does that mean or omitted? That means if you don't put something there, it assumes Saturday and Sunday. That's what it means. So if you just wanna go straight up normal every day, what is the weekend? You're going to stick one in there, right? So these are the different options and I think it's cool. I like this a lot that it gives you these different options. So that's what we got. So if I flip back over here and I go back over to my measure, let's take a look at what happens if we make a quick change. Now remember, we skipped the optional parameters, right? But if I come in here and I add a spot to put in the first optional parameter, which is weekend, and I do something like seven, I think seven was Sunday or Saturday, I think it was Sundays. If I do seven and I hit enter, watch what happens to my working days right here. Well, it's the same. I forgot. Maybe seven was a good one. Hold on. Oh, I think seven was Friday and Saturday. Yeah, it was Friday and Saturday. I thought I was grabbing Sunday here. So 11. Um, yeah, so that still is kind of excluding two days, which still falls within that range of kind of matching 261, right? So one would be Saturday or Sunday. Let's just go with Sunday only. My fault. We're going to go back and we're going to do Sunday, which is 11. I was thinking 17, which was Saturday. So I, I messed that up. 313, right? So now we went from 365 to 261 to 313. So it's only excluding Sundays. So Monday through Saturdays are considered weekdays. So this is pretty cool. The next one, and this one is a little bit trickier. And so I want to kind of dive into this a little bit is the option to add in holidays. And when I first looked at this, I was kind of like, how do I do this, right? I knew that probably the best way to do this was to have a better date table, to have a column on my date table that 
said, is this a holiday or not? Because that's the way I would always write my DAX. Anytime I'm writing DAX, helping a customer solve a problem, it's always going to be, I'm going to be changing the filter context or adding to the current filter context. And I'm going to do that with a column that's on a table, right? I'm going to filter by that column. So let's say calculate count rows from my date table, where is holiday equals or is, yeah, is holiday, is holiday equals false. Don't count those. Don't count the ones that are false or yeah. Or count the ones that are false. Don't count the ones that are true. Don't count the holidays, right? So I would add a flag on that table. And so the question is, how do I pass that in? This doesn't want to let me just pass in the date column from my date table where it equals that. Um, Cause you have to have a one column table. So let's take a look at that together real quick. If we come over here and go a little bit further down, the example that it shows here, which I don't love in the documentation. So sometimes you got to kind of work around that a little bit is it says, Hey, you can just provide a list. That's what these curly brackets and you can list out all your dates. Now that's not, again, that's not going to be the most ideal solution. My suggestion would be build those, build this logic into your date table. So it's reusable in a lot of different places. Not you're having to copy this code everywhere. You know that I'm just reiterating it for specific you know, specificity, right? Just for specific sake, I'm just re-referencing. You don't want to do this, but you could, right? We could go in there and we could say, hey, I want to add in two holidays that we we don't, we just don't want those to be, you know, we're not going to count those as working days, right? So I could come in here and of course, December 25th in the United States, maybe in a lot of places we say, hey, that's, we're not working on December 25th, right? So I could come in here and uh, say date. I could type in date here and then type in the year. So we say 2009, I'm just gonna stick with one year. Obviously you type this in for every year. And then I say the month is gonna be 12 and then we're gonna go with two, five, right? And so that's one, uh, I need to close that parenthesis there. Now I still have my list open, so I could throw in another day. So I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna throw in another date here. And I think it is Valentine's Day, I think is on what, February 14th, maybe. So let's do that, 2009. Now, I don't know if these are holiday or weekends. So if these are on the weekends, might mess up my number just a little bit because what I want to happen when I get to the end is for this to turn into 311. I'm adding two holidays, right, for 2009. So we go with zero two and then we add one four, close that up. So what I've done, if you look at this here, is I've added a list of holidays that I'm passing in to this function so that it doesn't count those days, right? So I hit enter, it should drop this number at least a little bit and it did. We were at 313, now we're at 311. Now again, I don't love this option. If I had 10 years in my table, I'd have to type 1225 10 times, right? And I'd have to create this massive list. It's better to put that into your date table, build an if condition um, and have an is holiday column. But how do we use that column? So I'm going to show you right now. If I go to my date table, you'll notice all the way over here on the right, I've created this is holiday using some very funky DAX. No big deal. I just wanted to create a couple of columns here or create a couple of rows that were true. So I've created some holidays. All right. So I have some falses and I have some trues, right? So what I want to do is any row that is true, I want to consider them holidays and I don't want to count them. They're not a working day. So if we go back into network days, that's what we're going to do now. So let's build a variable instead of just typing it straight into the code. I'm going to build a variable here and I'm going to say holidays, right? This is my list of holidays that I want to pass in to this parameter. And so the holidays that I'm going to pass in is let's do, we're going to calculate table and I'll go ahead and go down to the next line. Calculate table. We're going to bring back a uh, distinct list of dates from my date table here. So we'll do that. And then I'm going to add a filter. And so the filter I want to add is going to be date and then is holiday equals true, right? Because that's what it was. It's a true false um, data type. And so that's going to return a date. Now there is a way to test this. I always like to test my code. That's one of the things that makes variables great. So before I even put this into network days, I'm going to kind of comment that code out with control forward slash, and I'm going to count the number of days that are being returned by the holidays table. And I think if I remember correctly, it's supposed to be nine. There's nine holidays that I specified. So this is telling me that if I count these days from this table here, I'm doing a count rows on my filtered table, my calculate table expression, it's nine days. So this is what I'm gonna pass in right here. I'm gonna say exclude those nine days. So now we should go, again, those might be some of those weekends. So it might not exactly subtract nine, but we see the numbers going to go down. So you build a column on your table, it has the holidays in it, and this is how you pass it in. 
So here we go. Let's get rid of that. We're going to go back to our expression here. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Control forward slash to uncomment that code. And then right here in this list, I'm going to say, hey, let's pass in my list of holidays, right? So I'm passing those nine days in and I hit enter. And what we should see here is 304. Pretty good because originally we were at 313. If you remember, we were at 313 and then I put two days in there manually. That dropped us to 311. And then I got rid of that and I replaced it. So 313 to 304 is the nine days. So it's not counting those holidays. And this is how you do it. Very cool. Very cool DAX function, super easy to use. I don't know that I would use it a whole lot, to be honest with you, because obviously I've been writing DAX for a long time. I kind of have my own way of how I would have done this. But I do think it's cool. I think it has some very practical use, especially if I had a date table already and that date table was Saturdays and Sundays, but I wanted to do some other analysis very quickly and I wanted to do Friday and Saturday and see how that might impact some numbers. Maybe I would use this right now that I know it's here. Instead of having to build another new column in my date table, I could just plug this right in. And that's it. That's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you find it exciting and we'll see you in the next one.